Hello and welcome to another Mappypedia tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the pasture feed intake, which is a feature of the smart tags from the Ceres tag, um, and also be talking about some of the graphs that you can see in Mappypedia in a bit more detail. So first of all, what is pasture feed intake? So the Ceres tag is a smart tag that has an accelerometer on it, and it also has the ability to be able to upload algorithms that can use the data from the accelerometer and the temperature and the location data and, and things like that to try and understand and deduce certain behaviors from the animal itself. So the ear tag, the Ceres tag ear tag, um, which has this, this accelerometer on it, estimates how much pasture is actually being consumed by the animal by understanding its chewing behaviors. Uh, from there, it estimates the number of kilograms of consumption or pasture consumed as well as estimating the methane output in grams. So what we have here, we've got about 24 tags displayed on the screen. We've loaded up about a week's worth of data. Uh, this is actually real data, by the way, so you can see how these, these tags have been moving over time. So this is the 2nd of June, 3rd of June, and we can load up more history if we want. So we've loaded up seven days, we can load up all of our history or we can put in a start and end date range uh, and click OK, but we'll just stick with the seven days that we've got in here at the moment. And if I hover over one of these tags, we've got the VID, the visual ID, which is the number that's on the outside of the tag. Um, but the, the new fields that are created uh, as part of the pasture feed intake algorithms are the fields starting from grazing, which is the third one down, walking, resting and ruminating, and other. And this is estimating each of these activities in minutes. So you'll notice grazing has 120, walking has zero, uh, resting and ruminating has 192 and other has 48. Now these numbers usually add up to 360 or 360 minutes, which is six hours. And the reason for that is because when the tag is operating optimally, uh, you get a signal every six hours. And, um, and so this is the breakdown of those four activities over those six hours, 360 minutes. Uh, I say optimally, sometimes the tag will transmit less often than six hours if it's a, if it's a Ceres Ranch or a Ceres Trace tag. Uh, and that's because uh, if the battery is getting flat, it will transmit less often uh, to conserve power. Or if there's something that might be blocking the signal, if the animal is near a building, or if there's mountains nearby that might be blocking the signals to the satellites. So there's a, there's a few reasons why you might not be getting a signal every six hours. But you know, when everything's working uh, at, it, at its optimal, then you'll get this data every six hours. <coughs> so, um, so we've said that we've loaded up the last uh, 24 hours worth of data. So another way in which you can view some of this data, so, so notice with those four fields, we've got the grazing, the walking, resting and ruminating and other. Uh, there's nothing here about pasture feed intake or methane output. So to do that, we need to uh, click on this graph icon in the in the on the right hand side here, and that gives us um, a bunch of information in graphical format. So I'll just quickly talk through what some of these options are. So first of all, there's the distance in meters, and what this is actually showing now is the distance in meters travelled from one six hourly ping to the next six hourly ping uh, for the tags, and this is. This is an underestimate because it's just calculating the straight line distance from one ping to the next ping. So in, in reality, the, the animals would have moved further than this, but this does give you a bit of a guide and you can do some relative comparisons. So the colors of these graphs actually um, align with the colors of the tags. And if I hover over these lines, then uh, the lines turn black and, um, and the visual identifier at the top here changes. Uh, and if you notice the, the tag color on the right is also changing black. This has got a little bit easier to spot if we, instead of showing random colors, we just select light blue. And then if I hover over these uh, lines, we can actually see uh, most of the tags are light blue, both in the graph and on the right-hand side, but there's just one tag that's appearing black, which corresponds to the line that I'm hovering over. So, um, so basically what this is saying, so we can see here there's a peak here at about uh, 2,357 meters. So the units are actually shown in this label here. Uh, and that's basically saying that the animal moved, you know, a little under two and a half kilometers uh, from one ping to the next ping. And you might say, well, that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, we've got a few different data sources here. Um, and then here we've got how we want that data to be displayed. So we're looking at the distances. And if we wanted to add this up and say, well, you know, I really want to know how far each animal has moved over the whole week. So then you can click on this cumulative values option. And then that actually adds up those numbers 
uh, across the week. So we can see that the animal that's moved the furthest distance in the week is this tag here, and that's moved about 18 and a half kilometers. Uh, and then there's a tag here that's moved less uh, over the week, a little over 11 kilometers. And so then you can start to get some insights. Why are some animals moving more than others? Are they younger? Maybe they're a bit sick. Uh, maybe they're about to give birth. Um, and if and you can get some other insights, potentially if the land is being uh, overgrazed, you might see that some of these trends start to go up as all the animals are moving further and further because they're searching more for food. Uh, I had one user that realized that the animals in smaller paddocks were not walking as far as animals in bigger paddocks. And he doesn't want his animals to move very far because then they won't burn off as much energy and they put on uh, weight more efficiently. So what they're what they're doing now is they're actually slicing up their larger paddocks to make them smaller so that their animals put on weight more efficiently. So you can get all sorts of insights just by looking at these distances. Uh, so there's another option here for temperature. And this temperature here, it doesn't really make much sense to look at the total cumulative values for temperature. Uh, but what we look here is um, the temperature that actually comes from the tag itself is the outside temperature, the ambient temperature. It's not the temperature of the animal. And you can see quite clearly here the daily day-night patterns, these peaks as it gets hotter during the day and cooler at night uh, for these 24 tags that we're currently um, looking at on, on the map. And then we've got these next four values here, which are the same ones that we spoke about um, uh, with this pop-up here, the grazing, the walking, the resting and ruminating, and the other. These are these same four fields here. However, this is for the whole day. So the, the algorithms, the pasture feed intake algorithms that are actually running on the tag, uh, they will calculate these values and then transmit them once a day. So a little bit after midnight, we get these values coming through. <clears throat> so if you look at the grazing now, we can see each day how much this particular animal has grazed. So we can see if we're looking at this number up here as I move this line up and down, we can see that this peak here is at about the 890 mark. So that means it's it's been grazing for 890 minutes on that day. And then it's you know been grazing a little bit less the next day. It's closer to 740 minutes. Um, and of course, there's 1440 minutes in the day. So this is spending about roughly half the time grazing. And, um, and again, you get that for every individual tag. And again, you might say, well, you know, that's kind of interesting, but I want to find out uh, how much they've grazed over the whole week. So again, you can just select these cumulative values and you can start to get some of these um, bigger patterns uh, that, that are happening across the whole week. So the animal that's grazed the most is 5,110 um, minutes in grazing for the whole week versus some of these other animals that are much lower down the bottom, just a little over 2,000. And there's similar sort of patterns for the resting and ruminating, the walking and the drinking uh, and other um, activities. So now to get onto the pasture feed intake. So first of all, I'll just remove this cumulative values option. So what we have here is, again, this data is coming through daily. So we can see this, this date range down the bottom. So this peak here corresponds to the 3rd of June. So what we're looking at here is that, um, you know, on, on the day leading up to the 3rd of June, so actually over the day of the 2nd of June, because this data would have come in around midnight uh, at the start of the 3rd of June, this animal has consumed about 30.45 kilograms of pasture. And we can see how that's varied over time throughout the week. And again, we can see those individual graphs for all the uh, for all the individual tags. And again, you might say, okay, well, that's, that's kind of interesting, but how much of these animals consumed over the whole week? So again, you can select the cumulative values. And we can see that some animals have consumed nearly 170 kilograms of pasture in one week, and other animals have only consumed more like, you know, 54 kilograms of pasta. So looking at these relative values between the different tags uh, can really give you some insights um, as to as to some of these behaviours, the, 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 the consumption behaviours for these animals. Uh, and similarly for the, um, oh, and but, so this is showing you the, the total for each individual animal, but you might say, look, I'd really like to know how much the entire group of 24 tags has consumed over the whole week. So up until now, we've been looking at the original data if I look at the original data and the total, then we can click on this and we can see that, so the original data is down here, but they've all been added up to generate this graph up the top. So for all 24 animals, the total consumption over the whole week is 2,311 kilograms of pasture. And, and you can also, you don't necessarily have to have the cumulative values. You might want to look at the totals for every day. So now this is looking at, you know, how much has the, has the actual herd consumed each day 
uh, across the, the week. So it's usually sitting around the, you know, the 330 uh, kilogram mark for these, these first few days. And then uh, a bit further down, it's closer to the 300 kilogram mark. And then uh, if I go back to this original data, and then we've got something very similar for the methane output. So if you look at these scales here, this is going from zero to 30. If I change this to methane, so instead of it being the input of the pasture feed in kilograms, it's now the output methane output in grams. And the graphs look exactly the same because they're directly proportional, but these scales have changed. So now this is saying that this particular animal uh, has emitted 630 grams of methane on this particular day. And again, we can do all the same things that we did before. We can add them up over the whole week so we can see which animals have, have emitted the most methane. So this, this, this uh, worst emitting animal is about three and a half thousand grams. And again, we can look at the total across the whole herd uh, for the week and we can look at, you know, for the whole herd, they've emitted about 47,000 grams of methane. So that's that's the sort of the quick summary. There are some other um, interesting ideas as well in which you can compare different groups of animals. So in another tutorial, um, I discuss how to create tag groups. Um, this is a group that I've created a little bit earlier. So what we have here is we have one tag group with these blue tags, and these blue lines. Uh, there's seven tags in that group. And there's another group with the orange tags and the orange lines. Uh, and there's 17 tags in that group. And you can add as many groups as you want. You can split these tags into, into, into groups however you like. You could split them by, um, by breed, you could split them by sex, you could split them by age, split them by paddock. And, and tags can be in more than one group. But, but for this example, it's just a fairly simple arrangement with um, 17 tags. So out of the 24 tags, we've got 17 that are orange, seven that are blue. And, um, and we can see these, these colors here. And then when we, um, when we press play, we can see how these blue and orange uh, tags are interacting. So you can really start to get some understanding of social behaviors as well. <coughs> and then, um, but the reason, the main reason I'm showing you this is so that you can actually compare different groups of animals. So if we go back to this, um, you know, to this, these options on how we want to display data, we've got these tag group options as well. So if we look at the tag groups total, then we can see here that, um, you know, for the 17 tags, we can see that the total consumed, or oh, this is the methane output, so let's go to the pasture feed uh, intake. We can see the total consumed uh, for those 17 orange tags is nearly, you know, about 238 uh, kilograms consumed. Down here, it's about 211, and sort of towards the end of the week, it was 199. Um, and the blue is much lower. These numbers are much lower, which you would expect because there's less animals. It's seven compared to 17. Uh, but you could really start to, to understand the behaviors between these different groups. And you might say, well, you know, I really want to understand the individual animal behavior averages. Uh, this isn't really giving it to us because it's giving us the totals. And because these the numbers of tags in these groups are different, these totals make it look like the orange ones are consuming more, which they are, but, but not per animal. You can't really tell which animals are consuming the most. So for here, um, we can select the tag groups averages. So what we're looking at here, is um, the average consumption per animal. So basically it grabs the total and then divides it by the total number of um, uh, tags. So we can see here that the blue uh, tags are consuming, um, you know, a fair bit more than the orange ones on these days. But if we um, add the cumulative value over time, then we can see that, you know, there's really not so much difference. So really what this is saying is that for the orange group, um, by the end of the week, they had consumed um, on average 93 kilograms per animal, and uh, for the blue group, it's about 104. So the blue group's a little bit higher, but uh, but you know, overall they're about the same, which is kind of what we would expect because these tags are all on fairly similar animals and they're all um, operating within the same pasture area. So that's the main uh, user interface features for the pasture feed intake. There is also the ability to be able to download your data in CSV format so that you can um, you know, examine that data in other ways and make your own graphs in Excel and, and put them in data systems. So to do that, you can click on this download um, button and you can either select to download the CSV data for all the tags or for uh, the tags that are selected. Here we've only, we don't have any tags selected, so that number is zero. So let's quickly show you how to select tags. You can either select them just by clicking on tags themselves and it puts a blue box around them. And uh, and so it says here we've got seven tags selected. 
Uh, you can also select the tags by just drawing a polygon around them. So if you draw this polygon, then we can see that we've got all 24 tags selected. And then when I go to this download option, we can see that there's 24 tags and we want to download the pasture feed intake. And then we click OK and we open up this Excel file. Let's bring it across here. And what this is showing us is that we have, um, there's the visual ID, which is the um, external identifier on the outside of the tag. This is, this is an, an electronic serial number, ESN, which is really internal to the tag. Uh, it's not really very useful for the end users, but it is useful for people who are, who are analyzing the data, either at Service Tag or at Mappypedia. We have the, um, the date and time that that data was received. So we'll get one ping, uh, we'll get one row for every tag for every day. Then we've got the pasture feed, intake in kilograms, the methane output in grams, the grazing time, the resting and ruminating, walking and drinking and other times all in minutes. And, um, and we can see here we've got all this data here for the first, for those 24 tags. And then similarly, we've got another one for the second and then so on for the rest of the week. Now, if you want to download CSV data for more than the week, then you need to um, uh, download this historical data first. So you can download, say, 30 days worth of data or all your data. Then you'll get that data inside the. Um, uh, then you'll get that data inside the. Um, uh, what do I say? You'll, you'll, you'll get that data when you download it from the CSV data. But basically, the data that gets downloaded is what's currently loaded into the browser at the time, and what's currently loaded into the browser can be seen by looking at this times ladder. So, um, so one of the other things that we're really keen to get involved in, which which we haven't done yet, but uh, but by the time to watch this video, uh, maybe we'll, we'll have already done it. So it's a feature that, that we certainly want to include uh, in the future, is we want to be able to um, combine this data with weight data. So if we can take, say, weight input data, or if we can take uh, milk production data, then we can start to compare um, the pasture feed intake with the, uh, the efficiency of gaining weight or the efficiency of milk production and this could really start to feed into breeding patterns to really make your farm more sustainable and, and reduce the carbon footprint. Um, so that's something that we're very keen on doing. So if you do have any systems in place and you want us to, to feed in that data, then please get in contact with us. We're, we're very keen to do that. And something else, um, this data has only been shown for a week, but if you can imagine that you've been collecting this data for a year, and if you're the sort of operation where you move your animals to lots of different paddocks over that year, then you would have a time slider here that goes for a year. You would have graphs here. Um, let's just say, look at cum cumulative values. Um, you'd have graphs here that show you how the consumption is being, or the pasture is being consumed over that whole year. So these graphs would be a lot more detailed over a much bigger time period. And then as you move this time slider, you could be looking at various peaks and certain patterns. And you could be understanding not only when the peaks are occurring, but also where they're occurring. You can see which paddock they're on. So where was the most pasture being consumed? Was it, at a, was it at a, in a certain paddock? Was it at a certain time of the year? And that could also really help to gain some insights into the, the consumption of pasture, and that could potentially lead to ideas on how to make that more efficient. Um, you could potentially be comparing between different you know, types of pasture, um, different sizes of paddocks, different times of the year, the amount of time that they've been spending there. There's all sorts of um, things that you can do with this data to try and improve your operations overall. But, uh, but that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll do what we can to help you.